Hello again, guys, and welcome to Online Life Group. You know, it goes without saying that some of the problems in our lives are not our own doing. In fact, uh, some of the worst things we have to suffer through um, had nothing to do with us at all. You know, the, uh, often uh, global leaders or global conditions or, uh, you know, things that things that we have no power within ourselves to affect. Um, often leave us having to uh, to to pick up the pieces or, or deal with it. But you know, that that is part of not only our Christian life, but our human life. And so uh, this week, we're going to be talking about that, uh, following along with Pastor's sermon. And, um, and, and we're going to dive a little deeper into this, um, you know, very important part of our of our Christian walk. Hey, so get yourself ready real quick. Uh, get whatever you need, get comfortable. Um, and we're going to dive right in. Life was hard for Michael right from the beginning. On the day he was born, an eager medical intern tried to rush his delivery by strapping a pair of forceps onto Michael's tiny head and giving a yank. The intern pulled so hard that Michael suffered permanent nerve damage in his face, causing his left eye and lip to droop and his speech to slur. His parents divorced when he was young. Bullies tormented him because of his handicap. But Michael found his place acting in school plays. He even vowed to become a movie star, but no one in Hollywood was willing to cast an actor with a partially paralyzed face. That is, until he wrote and directed and starred in a movie about a washed up boxer from Philly named Rocky. You see, Michael's full name is Michael Sylvester Gardenzio Stallone, and what started as a handicap eventually became his trademark. All of us suffer setbacks that are not our fault. But just because you're down doesn't mean that you're out, and God will use what you're going through for good. Consider the Apostle Paul in Acts 27. He ended up shipwrecked because of the bad decision of others, but because he was there, God was able to use him to save the lives of all on board. God can and will use what you're going through today, too. All right, question one. Would you rather deal with a setback that you caused or one that was caused by someone else? You know, uh, Pastor talked about this in his sermon, um, and I agree with him completely. For me personally, dealing with a setback that I caused is much easier than dealing with one that somebody else caused, uh, you know, within reason, within reason. I, I, I don't really, you know, I mentioned in the intro that uh, sometimes, you know, global leaders make decisions or, you know, maybe there's atmospheric conditions or whatever. I, those those don't cause me a lot of, of grief. Um I can usually deal with that, but, but, but what I'm thinking more about is like uh, where Paul finds himself on this ship, and uh, you know he's given wise advice, and it's been ignored, and now everybody's life's in danger. Um, but, but really, I think, um, you know, the one I, I I'm thinking about one that comes to mind for me too, though, is is Joseph. Um, you know, everybody finds themselves in a position like Paul on the ship. You know, maybe you're not going to be shipwrecked, but uh, you know some. Some um, uh, isolated event, somebody's decision that's going to make a trip go badly or whatever, you know, they, that only lasts a few hours, a few days. That's one thing. Uh, but then but when we look at like Joseph, you know, his brothers decided to do this awful thing to him and he had to suffer for years. You know, if we live long enough, we, we wind up in, in some sort of a situation like that. And, and that can be difficult. Uh, for me, it's much more difficult. But, but you know, um, I, I have to say, though, uh, you know, with every time we deal with a thing like that, there's, you know, I think there's a there's an equal opportunity for us to grow, uh, for for the for the for the more awful it is. I don't know if that's making sense, but but what I'm what I'm thinking of specifically is that yes, for me it's much more it's much more difficult to deal with something that was caused by someone else, and yet God has used those things to bring me closer to Him. Often uh, the things that people do to us in life sometimes they're not over quick, like a uh, you know um, Paul's trip on the boat. I'm sure that lasted a whole lot longer than he wanted it to, but. Uh, ultimately was over quick when you consider that some things last for the rest of your life or, or for years. Um, those kinds of things can lead to hopelessness if we don't cling to God and the relationship that we have with Him. So, so in, in those situations, um, you know, when, when, when it's not our fault and there's, there's no way out, 
Um, they, we do have the opportunity to grow in our relationship with Christ, I think, um, better. I think it's more fertile ground for, for the growth of those relationships than, um, you know, than when everything's going great or, or at least, uh, you know, neutral. All right, question two. When you make a bad choice, is it usually because you listened to the ungodly, leaned on your own understanding, or followed the crowd? You know, I, I suspect that uh, our personalities um, have something to do with this. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I can speak for us all and, and say that, uh, that we've all made bad choices because of each of these three reasons, right? Sometimes listening to the ungodly, leaning on our under, own understanding, and sometimes from following the crowd. I, I suppose our, you know, our particular personalities are going to make one of these more likely than other others. And um, so, so I guess the key word on this sentence is usually. So for me, usually, it's going to be that I've leaned on my own understanding. Um, you know, you could look at that. I could, I could look at that in a good way. I could shine a good light on myself and say, you know, I'm a good problem solver, and I, and I really enjoy doing that. And um, uh, you could, you could. I, I could say that my problem is that I'm, uh, I'm good at doing this. But or I could look at it the other way. I could shine a bad light on myself and say I'm prideful, because that's a real truth, right? I mean, I struggle with waiting until I know for sure what Jesus wants from me. And I also know that I can know. I know that if I pray long enough, if I fast long enough, that He will tell me. And honestly, He doesn't usually make me wait that long. Typically, when I make my mistakes from my own understanding, it's because I didn't bother to ask Him at all. And that's pride. That's pride. I can I can try to polish that up and, and, and make me sound a little better, but it's probably better if I don't. The, the issue I'm dealing with is pride. Um... You know, whatever your issue is, whichever these three that, that, that you um, struggle with, I, I encourage you to get to the bottom of it and shine the ugly light on yourself. You know, what's the, what's the worst reason why you're doing this? Because it gets in the way of our relationship with Jesus. All right, question three. How do you seek God during a setback? What is the primary way that you hear from Him? You know, no, no one likes setbacks, right? But there, there, is, a, um, there is a silver lining, right? Uh, for the most part, when, when everything's going my way, uh, I tend to be pretty happy with what I'm doing. I tend to not be quite so desperate to hear from God. You know, it's it's related to what I talked about on the last one that I, I tend to like to try to solve my problems myself. Um, but when you've suffered a setback, at least you know, you know, there's there's degrees of them. But I mean, I mean, one of the bigger ones. Typically, you get pretty desperate to find out what uh, what God would have you do. Um, now, while there are a lot of ways to go about hearing from God, for me, the primary way that I'm going to seek God during a setback is I'm going to pray and fast. Um, I find that fasting has been a real gift from God for me, which is shocking because uh, I haven't missed a lot of meals voluntarily throughout my 47 years, but, but fasting is not starving yourself. Uh, for me, fasting and, 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 and I'm, you know, if you, if you have this gift, and, and I, I wholeheartedly encourage you to find out if you do. But uh, fasting for me is not starving myself. It is me experiencing a miracle. Uh, I, I pray and I ask God to help me with it, to, to call me into it. Or He calls me into it first. I, it depends. But uh, I, I, lose, I lose my hunger for however many days He's asked me to do it. Uh, it really, it really is, in, in my opinion, a, a miracle. And it does seem to make it easier for me to hear from him. I feel like my flesh is kind of out of the way. I feel like, um, you know, my mind is a little quieter, a lot quieter, actually. So, um, you know, I never would have known that if not for a setback. In fact, there's a whole lot of my uh, walk with Christ that would have never become so rich and so real if not through the setbacks in life. So, so yeah, nobody likes setbacks. And I, I'm not telling you to like them, but 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 God does use them. 
God does use them for your good. And I know we sound like a broken record because we say that all the time, but it's true all the time, right? Um, yeah. All right, question four. What is the one thing you could do differently to help you hear from God during a setback? You know, when it comes to what can we do differently, I guess, um, you know, this was a this was a big growth process for me. Uh, the standard for me uh, through most of my life was to be very angry with the other guy. Uh, to, 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 to blame that other person, but then to try really hard to quell that feeling before I talked to God about it. I felt like um, I felt like I couldn't be honest with God about the anger I felt towards the other person. And, um, and yet, you know what? I would tell you, uh, if you feel like I do, or like I did, I was wrong. The thing that I had to learn how to do differently was that I, I have to be honest with God, with Jesus, about um, how I really feel. And sometimes, yes, we are angry. And, 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 you know, just because we're angry, that doesn't mean that we're sinning. We can be angry and not sin. It's a dangerous emotion. It's not one we want to play with all that much if we can help it. But sometimes when things happen to us outside of our control, absolutely we're angry. Because sometimes the other person was innocent. Honestly, it doesn't really matter to you that much right out the gate, does it? Even if he, if, even if he was, there was really nothing that he could have done differently. Um, sure, it's hard to see that in the beginning. But sometimes that person harmed you on purpose. And sometimes anger is a, uh, a completely normal uh, emotion. Jesus became angry on earth. So, so the emotion of anger is not itself sinful. And I, I find that when, when setback happens to me, what I've learned to do is to talk to Jesus about how I feel and the anger that I do feel and not, not try to, to hide that from him. I'm not talking about being irreverent. I'm just talking about being honest with him about what he knows you feel already. Because in that way, I can ask him for, you know, how do I get out of this? How do I, how do I, how do I help myself get over this anger? How can I see this from this other person's point of view? And, and he'll do that. He'll do that. That's one of the main ways that, that we do hear from him. Um, he'll show you how to see it from the other person's perspective. Or, or listen, sometimes there's not another person's perspective. Sometimes they did mean to harm you. It's true. We live in a sinful and broken world, and we all know that. Sometimes people hurt you because they wanted to hurt you. And you may be innocent in this case. Uh, Christ was innocent when they hung him on the cross. So sometimes it is ours to simply endure. Uh, so, so yeah. So, so for me. So what, what, what did I learn to do differently? You know, to just trust Jesus even with the ugly stuff. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of our time together. Hey, I, I hope you had a. Um, Hope you had a, a an enlightening discussion. Uh, I hope this was something that you know, if we, that we were able to learn something, able to get a little closer to Christ, able to strengthen our relationship with Him a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of proud of myself that I didn't say COVID nineteen once during the whole thing. <laughs> Although that's obviously a setback that was outside of our control, wasn't it? Uh, you know, I just just as a, an aside, um, you know. Hopefully this one looked about the same as all the rest of them from your perspective, but on our side, gosh, taking the week off must have been a terrible idea. We have been shooting this thing for hours now. We can't seem to get any questions to come out right. Every Everything we try to answer, you know, the cat comes flying in and bumps into something or somebody's dragging something down the street outside. Or I mean, we have just had nothing, nothing but turmoil on this end. It, it's been a, whoa, we're glad this one is over <sighs> hopefully you had more fun on your end uh, than we did um, anyway guys uh, yeah let me pray for you and i'll see you next time father we thank you for being with us we thank you for helping us get through this and father we ask that you would use this and whatever else setbacks are going on in our life to grow us to to grow us closer to you and to grow us as people and um in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.